Eddie Hearn is claiming that he's in talks with Manny Pacquiao because he wants him to fight on the zone. Now, Pacquiao at the moment is, well, it says here that he has left his long ter- long term promoter, Bob Arum. Maybe he did. Was the did Arum have any involvement at all in the Matisse fight? I don't think he did, did he? In which case, yeah, maybe Manny Pacquiao could fight on the zone, but he ain't going to come cheap. <laughs> That's for sure. Even though Manny Pacquiao didn't beat anybody elite, in the welterweight division in Lucas Matisse. He's still a man who has made enormous amounts of money. And that comes with a certain sense of entitlement. When you've made crazy numbers for fights, a promoter who wants to sign you better be coming with numbers at least somewhere close to what you're used to earning in your heyday if he's hoping to sign you. So... This will not be an easy acquisition for Eddie Hearn. Manny Pacquiao is a veteran. He understands the game. There are certain things, I'm sure, which he was not happy about with regards to his relationship with Bob Arum over the years. And the last thing he wants to do at the age of 39 is to tie himself into a situation where the things he didn't like about his previous promotional situation are going to reoccur in in any new promotional situation, if that makes sense. He's been there, he's seen it, he's done it, he knows the business, he knows exactly what he wants and what he doesn't want from a prospective promoter. So I think it will be a very difficult signing for Eddie Hearn to get, but if he does get Pacquiao, it's not a bad signing because he can do quite a lot with him, right? He's talking here in this article about if he signs Pacquiao, fights with Amir Khan, Jesse Vargas, and Kel Brook. Well, you know, Jesse Vargas has already fought. We can forget about that. But Amir Khan and Kel Brook against Pacquiao, they're decent fights for Pacquiao and they're decent fights for those guys too. People will tune in, certainly in the UK. They will definitely tune in and they will definitely buy tickets for Amir Khan versus Pacquiao. If that fight was to happen, you know, late this year, sometime next year, in the UK particularly, people are going to tune in for that. Even if that fight happened in somewhere in the Middle East, and they've been talking about getting a fight on in Dubai or, or wherever for a very long time now, and it hasn't come to fruition. But if they did eventually manage to put a fight on uh, in the Middle East, then there would be massive support for Pacquiao and Khan because there is an enormous immigrant population from Pakistan and India and the Philippines in that part of the world, an enormous immigrant population from, you know, the Philippines and South Asia. So yeah, this is, Khan Pacquiao could certainly sell, I think. That could definitely be a big fight. To a lesser extent, uh, Pacquiao versus Kell Brook. (coughs) Excuse me. So we'll see what Eddie Hearn can do here. There were some people who thought I was a bit harsh on Eddie Hearn's first The Zone show. But I ain't being harsh. I'm just saying it as it is. That's a weak show. That's a weak card. I don't mean he can't put on strong cards in the future. And to be fair, I wasn't thinking about the fact that he does have the World Boxing Super Series on The Zone. And that's very good. He does have all these cards from the UK that he's going to be showing on The Zone. That's very good. There's also going to be Bellator shown on the zone, and that's obviously good. UFC, oh sorry, MMA is very popular. So yeah, the zone has a few things there which people might be interested in for nine ninety nine per month. But at the same time, how many American fans really know the fighters who are going to be in the World Boxing Super Series? Some of the very hardcore American fans will know. But will the wider public really be that interested in the World Boxing Super Series? How many Americans are in it? See, that's what most Americans care about is their own fighters. Be- and, you know, not just Americans, but fight but, uh, fight fans worldwide, they care about one of their own being in a tournament. How many Americans are in the World Boxing Super Series Season 2? And if there is any Americans, how many Americans are in there that 
the general public in America actually care about. So for hardcore boxing fans like us, we could look at the fact that the World Boxing Super Series is going to be on the zone and say, yeah, that's good. But in terms of the success of the zone long term, having the World Boxing Super Series on there when there's hardly any Americans in it, that's not going to help them. <laughs> you know, they're still going to struggle if that's all they've got. They need to sign some relevant big name American fighters. That's what they need to do, DeZone, if they're going to succeed long term. Eddie Hearn says he knows it's going to be difficult. He knows that the industry in America, the, estab the boxing establishment is against him. He expected all that. And it's a long term plan. And they're willing to weather the tough times in order to reap the fruits of their labor later on down the line. But. I don't know, man. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I just, I find that first card weak. And as a kickoff card, if I, were, if I had anything to do with the zone, I'd be looking for a stronger kickoff, kickoff than that. Much stronger. You know? And I'm sure he tried to get a much stronger kickoff card than that. But what I'm saying is, first impressions last. And when you're launching with such a weak card... I don't think it's going to inspire too much confidence in the audience, you know. But again, there's, I guess, still plenty of time to acquire some more high-profile fighters, some more relevant fighters, and then we'll see how it goes. But at the moment, I wish the zone all the best because at the end of the day, the more boxing platforms there is, the better it is for the fighters and the better it is for the fans. So I hope the zone works, but looking at the situation right now it just looks like it's going to be very very difficult for the zone to work you know anyway let me know how you feel in the comment section below about this the zone situation and actually let me recommend this interview right here with Hearn. he does it with fight hype uh, ben thompson does the interview very good interview very very good interview because for those who are interested, Eddie Hearn gives an insight into the mind and the life of a boxing promoter, a very big, at this point in time, boxing promoter. And, you know, he talks about the ups and downs and how difficult it is and how boxing can make you bitter and what boxing did to his dad and the day-to-day -day life that he lives, where he's flying here and then flying there and going to meetings here and meetings there and up on the phone. And he, he said... At one point in, in in the interview, he's just thinking about dates and fights and who's on this undercard and who's going to fight who and so-and-so's pulled out of a fight. and this. And he's just got an absolute sea of boxing in his brain, things that he's got to try and organize and stay on top of. And he says he'll be at home sitting on a couch with his kids in one of the rare moments that he actually manages to relax. And his wife's asking him something. But all he can think about is, oh God, who am I going to get on in that six rounder in Boston in two weeks time? <laughs> you know, who am I going to replace that opponent with? His wife's talking to him about something to do with the family and he's thinking about who's going to go on the six rounder <laughs> in Chicago or whatever. It is quite incredible actually seeing Eddie Hearn talk about boxing, the way he's able to reel off uh, dates, venues, boxers names and records and all that kind of stuff when he's got so many fighters on his books i find it incredible frank warren can't do it and he was never able to do it i've never seen a time in frank warren's career where he was able to reel off all these different names and dates and places and you know all the cards and stuff like that just off the top of his head without notes uh, frank warren's never been able to do that i've never seen him do it in all the decades i've followed his career Whereas Eddie Hearn, without notes, can tell you who's going to be on what show, what schedule's going to be where, who's going to be fighting who, for all his different cards all around the world. That's pretty incredible, <laughs> without any notes. So he is immersed in the life, and he fully believes in it. He obviously, obviously loves boxing, but at the same time, he hates the business. He says the business is a horrible business. And Ben Thompson interestingly agrees <laughs> agrees with him. And I can believe it is a horrible business. But yeah, if you want an insight into the life of a boxing promoter, particularly a big international boxing promoter, then have a watch of this interview. It is actually pretty damn interesting. 
you know. I don't really have much sympathy for an Eddie Hearn or, well, Eddie Hearn in particular, because he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, and I got nothing against anybody who was born with a silver spoon in their mouth. All I'm saying is, I'm, you're not really going to have my sympathy. I'm sure you're a nice person. I don't begrudge you the money you have, but I'm not going to sit here and feel sorry for you because you because you're working, you know, ridiculous hours because you're doing it optionally. You could just chill. <laughs> you could just have an easy life. You're choosing to put yourself through all this rigmarole, you know. So you know, it is what it is. It's not like you're doing it to keep a roof over your head. That's guaranteed for life anyway for you. So. I, I just find it interesting, you know, so it's not like I'm sympathizing with her or anything like that. I just find it interesting. He talks about, Ben Thompson asks him, have you ever had like a jaded moment in boxing where you're just sitting there thinking, Jesus, do I really want to do this? <laughs> and Eddie Hearn says, I have them all the time. <laughs> Those jaded moments where you, where you catch yourself, you know, and you're thinking like, Jesus, what am I doing? You know, one of them kind of moments, I guess we've all had the moments in different circumstances where when you're on the go and when everything is moving at 100 miles an hour, sometimes you don't get a chance to stop and pause and reflect. You know, you might be in some kind of hectic job or something that's really stressful. And in the moment you get to go to the toilet and you sit, you don't even, you don't even go to the toilet to do a number one or a number two. You go to the toilet to sit down. And while you're sitting down, on the toilet, you know, with the toilet seat down, you're looking at yourself in the mirror. And that's when you catch yourself thinking like, what the hell am I doing with my life? <laughs> you know, and Eddie Hearns had moments like that when it comes to being a boxing promoter because of how hectic his life is. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting, man. This particular interview, I recommend it. And yeah, anyway, let me know how you feel about Manny Pacquiao. Will he sign with Eddie Hearn the zone? Is there any possibility that Pacquiao would do this would it be a good move for him you know I've seen some people who just say DAZN's trash and Eddie Hearn's a con man and these people are not rational okay I've got my reservations about DAZN but I'm not just going to come out and say DAZN is trash and Hearn's a con man and that's all there is to it no no American's going to buy it it's it's a terrible platform this is stupidity anyone who's saying stuff like that you're stupid simple as that okay if you want to say something intelligent, if you want to have your reservations, like I do, that's cool. But to just come out and make all these blank, oh, it's a trash platform and Hearn's a con man, never buy anything that he sells. <laughs> this is irrational. Hearn has done incredible shows in the UK. If he's capable of doing incredible shows in the UK, stacked cards with quality fighters and extremely entertaining fights if he's capable of putting those shows on in the uk he's capable of putting them on in the united states it remains to be seen whether he can do it long term whether he can get fighters to sign with him long term so he can continuously put on quality shows that remains to be seen but this is not just some guy who's a chance or who is a con man no this is a guy who's got an enormous amount of money behind him with the zone in the US and who has been phenomenally successful in the UK by doing great work, not by being a con man, but by actually doing great work. So, you know, people need to be realistic about it. Again, I understand if you have your reservations, I do too, but be realistic, you know, be logical. Anyway, let me know how you feel about everything I talked about in this video. It's happening. I'm out.